You are now viewing Prophet H. Walker and True Life Pentecost Church. Those that are viewing and seeking after righteousness, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I endure all things for the election, which means those who are chosen, that sanctified and set apart, uh -huh. that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Yes. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live now, with him. Now, dead with Christ means I'm not. It 
won't be long. I said one these mornings, it won't be long. I'm going up to glory. Oh, I'm a soldier. Oh, I'm a soldier. Oh, I'm a soldier. Oh, I'm a soldier. I got to fight. I got to fight on. We got to fight. We got to fight on. We some warriors. Oh, we some warriors. Oh, we some warriors. Oh, we some warriors. One more time. Now one of these mornings, it won't be long. You can look for me and I'll be gone. I said I'm going up to glory to scream and shout to get the my lamb to turn me out. I said one of these mornings, one of these mornings, one of these mornings, it won't be long. One of these mornings, one of these mornings, one of these mornings. It won't be long, cause I'm a soldier. Oh, I'm a soldier. Oh, I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. Let us receive words from Prophet H. Walker. Let me share those testimonies that enabled us to accomplish what we have accomplished Amen. and bigger things Amen. because the Bible says in the book of Nehemiah they had a mind to work yeah. we thank God for the spirit of true light to give exceedingly even above that which they have actually to give we thank God and I'm here to tell you your labor is not in vain that's some my uh, fifty dollars Elder Brooks, $200. Again. Evangelist Chris, $65. Is the envelope no name? $200. Thank you. Oh, this Evangelist Chris. All right, $65 plus $200 envelope. Evangelist Chris. Amen. Uh, this is a heavy one here. Dollar Ali, seven hundred dollars. Yeah. Ella Nancy, four hundred dollars. Yeah. Let me see. Ain't no number on this. Wait a minute. Daughter Kelly, five hundred and seven dollars. Yeah. Ella Woodus, another envelope. $347. Yes. And evangelist. Amen. Praise the Lord. Elder Ricky. $300. Yes. Evangelist Marshall. Elder Marshall. $1,200. Yes. Holy hallelujah. Yes. Now, give God the glory. And give yourself a hand, please. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, we're going to do great things in Atlanta. Another envelope? All right. Uh, Brother Kenya. Hey, man, he's, he's walking slow, but he's coming. <laughs> Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. Hey, man, Brother Kenya, $180. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Hallelujah. You can tell how you're saved by the action you exhibit. And Jesus said, by their fruit, you shall know them. Amen. Thank God. Let me share a word with you uh, tonight. And uh, the thought I want to leave, I'm not going to be long, but I think it's an important thought. Uh, in 2 Timothy 
chapter 3. I want to pick right up from verse 13. Yes. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of. Continue in the things you have learned, knowing who has instructed or guided you or taught you. Uh huh. And then from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is wise unto salvation. Uh huh. All scriptures given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. All scripture, all the Bible right. is given by God. And it's profitable for? Reproof, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect. That the man of God may be perfect or complete in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now again, brothers and sisters, we have done that. Give me Second Timothy and I'll jump right in at verse uh, 4. 2 and 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may choose peace. I've himself. shared before, when you call into holiness, you cast aside all the ventures of the world, Amen. all the uh, problems of the world. In other words, you have these worldly problems, but you don't carry them as a weight, because that weight will cause you to lose your focus and the next thing you know your joy is gone, your peace of mind is gone, your comfort is gone and you come to church you can't worship God. So you have to cast aside the immediate problems of this life and take on the Spirit of God and learn how to walk in that Spirit and anything that you can't handle, God can. So we have to learn, brothers and sisters, how to press our way carrying our cross and again I say this is an individual race. Can nobody run that race for you but you yourself? Yeah. The decision and the choices you make has to be your decision and your choice. You can't ask nobody for no advice when it comes to living for the kingdom. You can follow the advice of your leader. Amen. But the Bible said, know who is teaching you. Know in whom you have learned. Yeah. So we have to understand the importance of having a focus on the rightly divided scripture that you can ever uh, transcend from this carnality and all these problems into a spiritual you where there is no worry in the world. Amen. Amen. I was a little bit upset because this uh, process in Atlanta I thought was taking too long. But it's not taking too long. Everything going to work out according to God's time. Amen. Amen. All we got to do is sit back and relax and enjoy the ride. Amen. Hallelujah. And carry our cross. Oh, and don't let the devil take your cross. Because your cross, again, represents your crown. In 2 Timothy, I'm in chapter 2. Uh, jump in at verse 8. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Yes. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Yes. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake. I endure all things for the elect's sake, which means those who are chosen, that sanctified and set apart. Uh -huh. That they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Yes. It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with now, him. Now, dead with Christ means I'm not living according to the world, even though I'm in the world. I'm living for Christ. So I'm dead according to the world, but my life is in the spirituality of God. And once I make up my mind, I'm going to follow the Spirit and not lean on the flesh, then the flesh has to be submissive to the Spirit. We've got to understand, brothers and sisters, this is a warfare, not only are we fighting the devil outside, but sometimes we have a warfare. The struggle is within. I've got to keep my focus. I can't lose my focus on Jesus because the devil will overwhelm me with psychological warfare. The devil will try to trick me and make me think nobody likes me. Somebody's trying to scheme against me. Ain't nobody trying to scheme against you in True Light Church. But the devil is always trying to scheme against you. But if we know his devices, that we don't worry about the enemy because we're going to stand aside and let God fight our battle. But we've got to learn 
how to hold our ground, hold our integrity, and keep our testimony. Don't let the devil take your testimony. And if God brought you to a place, plant your feet. If everything is falling into chaos around you, plant your feet. And tell the devil, I'm not going nowhere. I'm here to say, I'm in this battle, and I'm not going back on Jesus. This is a warfare church. And you've got to make your calling and your election sure. They that call on the name of God have to be prepared to fight against the enemy. But again, as God told Jehoshaphat, this is not your battle. And when Jehoshaphat told the people that, the Bible said they rested on the words of the prophet. Not your battle. It's God's battle. But God is using you as a vehicle or a pawn in this struggle because God has to have someone on earth to testify to his glory. So as long as we keep our testimony, as long as we don't back up, as long as we don't quit, as long as we don't try to go somewhere else and get a restart, there's no restart in, in Isaiah, the second chapter again. Jump right into Amen. verse 2. Important passage of scripture. And again, to my brother, who's been emailing me quite a lot. And I, I forget whether you're in North Carolina or where you're at. But I certainly am going to let you know our grand opening in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm expecting you to be there with a suitcase. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Read. And it shall come to pass in the last days, last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. All people have to flow to that holy mountain. Now let me show you something here. No matter what continent you go to, America was the continent God chose for the latter day church and the gospel message of truth to be uh, exhibited and to go forward. America. America was that guiding light. Now I'm showing you this in this context. All other continents and nations rejected God and would persecute the church. But America at least, though they were not always, you might say, in tune with God, they nevertheless let the gospel be free preached. Any type of religious group could come to America and open up a church and go on. Nobody would bother them. Now, this was for a specific reason, that the true church wouldn't be oppressed. Amen. So the true gospel could go forward, and it's going forward even right now. Oh, they hate us, Amen. but they can't stop us from talking. They can't stop us from preaching. They can't stop us from accomplishing what God has already visioned for us to accomplish. Yes. So I'm saying, when you come to America, it's for a specific reason. And when you find the prophet in the Lord's house and the true light church and light the path of every man that comes in the world, Amen. then you've got to learn how to understand this is not your, by your own initiative. This is by the Spirit leading and guiding you to a place that would all fulfill the scripture in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. All people shall be gathered to the holy mountain of the Lord's house. So once we understand that our calling is not by some type of accident. Mm -hmm. It's not by chance. Mm -hmm. It's not by mistake. It's Amen. because God willed for us to be here at this moment in history right now. The greatest moment Amen. in all history is right now. Where the battle of Armageddon is being fought right now. And people, you've got to make your mind up. You too, you've got to make a choice. You can't keep saying, well, I'm doing a good job and this, that, and the other. You got to make a choice. You got to join in with the prophet in the Lord's house and follow the leader God has set over the church in these last and evil days. There's no two ways about it. They had to follow Moses. Or if they were rejected Moses, they rejected the God who sent Moses. And you know what their end was. Those who rejected Moses' law died, what? Without mercy. God is not coming back with no type of mercy. That, that period is now. Amen. The mercy and grace is now. you got to make a choice right now. You can't wait till God blows the trumpet, amen, and then stand before the people in judgment and then say, well, Lord, uh, I, I might have made a mistake, but, but I got my mind right now. No, it's too late. Don't let it, said be, don't let it be said too late. Amen. We've got to learn, brothers and sisters, that we're on a mission, and that mission is to represent the true church of the living God. 
and we're doing just that. But we can't get discouraged and we can't let circumstances cause us to leave away from where Amen. God has brought us by divine intervention. He brought us here. Amen. Now, to say that everything is going to be smooth while we're here, I ain't going to tell you that lie. Because that's a lie. Amen. Things are sometimes will get tougher when you're here than it was before you came here. But Paul said persecutions and afflictions that beset me at Antioch and Iconium, through them all, God delivered me. God, you can't understand what I'm saying. When the apostle put in prison, God delivered them. Peter was put in prison and God delivered him. But the people kept on praying while he was in prison. Yeah. And the angel came down, but he was at such a peaceful state of mind yeah. in prison, waiting now for the king to send uh, the messenger or the soldiers, get ready to get his head cut off. Uh -huh. Peter went to sleep. The angel had to shake him and wake him up and say, wake up Amen. and put your shoes on. We get out of here. Hallelujah. Oh, brothers and sisters, I'm trying to let you know, you think you got a problem? You ain't got no problem at all. Your problem is in your faith yes. in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now I ain't got to say that again. Amen. When you learn how to cast aside everything and trust yes. in God, you will find doors open that, that never was opened before. It's a miracle what we have accomplished and what we're getting ready to accomplish. Amen. People don't stop and think. And that ain't nothing but, I'm talking about, we're not talking about a super miracle, if there's such a thing as a super miracle. Yes. That ain't nothing but a super miracle. Y'all know when we left uh, uh, Michigan, they had us dead. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. But God said, get up Amen. and move on. Amen. And we are moving on and we're going to do greater things because we're still going to Charlotte. Amen. And I was telling the ministers, I got my mind set on Washington, D.C. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody said, I just begun to fight. When the battle line is drawn, hallelujah, I, I, I'm ready to start praising God. Because the praises go before the soldiers. Praising God in the beauty of holiness. Beauty of holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. Holiness. And let me correct myself. I said uh, uh, celestial voices, but it was the clouds of heaven. Amen. So those of you remember YouTube, amen, that was the clouds of heaven that gave, gave that A and B selection. Amen. A beautiful selection. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just overjoyed. Amen. Yeah. And uh, this brief message is to try to let you know, even if the devil tries to trick you, you don't have to be tricked. My focus is on, in other words, I love people in the natural but my love for God and his kingdom supersedes anything that I might love in a natural context. Y'all see where I'm going. Now, hear me. God requires this. He told uh, in, in the word, uh, you have to love me more than you love mother and father. I believe he used the word hate, but... You have to rightly interpret that. He don't mean that you hate your father and mother, literally. What well, he's trying to say, that if it were a contest, you have to choose me over your natural loved ones. And this might be interpreted by a natural sense of reasoning as hate. Amen. Oh, oh, they hate me because they go to that true light church. No, we don't hate you. But we don't understand uh, your mythology and thinking that you are not in tune with us. Amen. So, though you might think we hate you, we don't hate you, but we certainly hate your lifestyle. Amen. Amen. And we love true holiness. Amen. So, we have to bring things into this uh, proper perspective. Uh, I'm in the second book of Second Timothy. Uh, verse 10 again. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Yes. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Read. If we suffer, we shall also reign with if him. If we what? Suffer. We shall what? 
Also reign with him. If we suffer a little while, we're going to heaven. Yeah. Where Jesus is. But we got to suffer a little while. That's in the natural. But in the spirit, man, I'm still happy. Though I'm suffering. I know it's deep. But understand what I'm saying. Amen. On the job, you are oppressed and you, you run into all kind of demon spirits. In this world, you run into all kind of demon spirits. But nevertheless, I'm happy because I'm saved and I'm in Christ Jesus. Now watch this. Read. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we deny him, how do you deny him? By not obeying him. Amen. If he sent you here, you got to stay here. You can't leave and say, well, I still love you. No. Why do you think he brought you here? Right. By their fruit, you shall know them by their action. Now watch those. Three. If we believe not, yet he abided faithful, he cannot deny himself. Yes. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Wait Lord. Wait a minute. Put them in remembrance of these things he just forestated. Put them in remembrance, charging, which means commanding them. Read. Before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to Don't the Don't say of you love the Lord, but when it comes to proving it, you can't back it up. Amen. Let's learn how to back up everything we say because we're in holiness. <laughs> Esther said, I'm going to the king unannounced. And she sent word. Did she do it? She backed up what she said. Amen. And she said, if I perish, I perish, but I'm going. Now, she sent the message back that I'm going. Now, I wonder if some thought back, oh, she's just talking. She's just saying she ain't going before that king. And her head cut off. But she went. Because she was on a mission. And she put flesh aside. She denied the natural order of her uh, comfort zone. And went before the king. And God gave her the victory. Now, what if she had it back down and said, well, no, I, I, I can't go because I, I, I'm not foolish. She couldn't do that. Well, she could have, but she didn't do it. Now, God put this in the Bible for a testimony to let you know somebody got some backbone, somebody got some courage, somebody's not always thinking about me and thinking about God. We got to learn how to put me aside and think about God. Cast aside everything. Every weight that so easily beset you. And let's pick up our cross and march forward in Jesus' name. And we're going to accomplish everything I told you if we work together, stand together, let the strong bear the affirmities of the weak. In other words, if you can give 500, fine, and that one you can't give but 30, that's fine. Amen. That 30 is just as important as that 500. Amen. Don't misunderstand now. Just as important. That woman who gave that penny gave more than them all because she gave all she had. Amen. So important that we understand the parables of the Bible. So let's go forward in Jesus' name. Let's rejoice. Let's be happy. Let's not come to church and have to be pumped and pumped and pushed and prodded. Come with the Holy Ghost. Walk through that door ready to kick your shoes off and do your step or two. Like they did in the old sanctified church. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. They didn't have too much. One thing they had, they had that Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I thank God for the word tonight. Thank God for the uh, powers of heaven, Amen. for the true life band. I just thank God for all that has transpired tonight. And I thank God for those who continue to contribute. Yeah. And we're not through. Amen. Amen. Right. We can't wait till third Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We got work to do. Yeah. Once we sign our name. We're going to get that thing right. It's going to call something that God's going to provide. I got a target date set. I'll let you know at a later date.
Blog Talk Radio.